I think we're ready. We're ready, Abby? Yeah, I think we're ready now. Okay, sounds good. All right, so we can skip to the next slide. Perfect. Um, so career mapping. Uh, does everybody here know what career mapping is? Yes, no, maybe a little bit. Feel free to jump in. Let's assume no. Okay, we're going to assume no. So career mapping. <laughs> Dead silence. Um, so career mapping, the whole intention is to help employees understand and develop skills they need to achieve their goals and career advancement within the company, right? So we're, we're helping our employees feel uh, fulfilled, encouraged, um, and feel like they're growing in their job. And doing so helps us internally develop their skills and knowledge uh, so that we can achieve our future business goals. Um, so we're trying to align the skills and abilities of our workforce with the direction of the company. Um, and career mapping is a great way to do that. Uh, next slide. So before you can really do that, you need to establish core roles within the company. So you want to categorize or catalog the core professions within the organization. Um, you create a list of core and secondary professions needed to grow and sustain the business. So you're looking at where you're at today and where you need to be in the future. Um, GitLab has done a great job of that. If you look at uh, any of the different areas within GitLab, there's a pretty defined set of core roles and then the supporting roles that, that go along with that. So part of that is identifying the, the key skills, knowledge, and abilities for each profession and each level of that profession. So you want to establish levels of advancement, junior, senior, staff, and beyond. Uh, next one. And then the focus should be on jobs, right? So by identifying these professions, identifying the roles and the abilities necessary, then the focus is more on how they can contribute then on specific job titles and compensation shifts. Um, so you want to, to drive contribution driven goals. So what skills and abilities most impact the growth of the company, which professions are needed at what stage, and can you go back to the slide? There you go. <laughs> Where can employees contribute while growing their competency? So you just wanna make sure that, that it's a growth mindset, right? It's a goal driven mindset. All right, next slide. So, and this is just an example. Uh, obviously, I picked the one that I'm most familiar with, uh, the UX team. We have our junior UX designer role, which is really entry level. After that, we, we move on to UX designer, which is roughly two to five years experience. Um, and beyond that is senior UX designer and then staff. Um, and there's actually, if you click on the UX designer uh, image of the web page, you can go directly to that web page so you can actually read what each one entails. Um, and each one of our, our departments should have something like this. If, if you don't, uh, I, I would be surprised, but if you don't, then we definitely need to make sure that that, that is there. Because um, this is what's really going to aid you in moving along and helping them uh, build a career path uh, within GitLab. And at this point, I think it's time for Abby to jump in. Yeah, so I've just um, stopped presenting my screen so I can see things a little bit better. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about why we should do this um, at GitLab. And we actually received some feedback from the survey that we did in February of 2007. And the number one um, thing that came up there was if pe people would consider leaving if they felt there was a stagnation um, for their career paths. So um, we, that's kind of a really good reason um, for why we should start doing this. And also, I think now that GitLab has grown to the size that it is and will continue to grow, there'll be more um, opportunities for people to move around to gain um, skills, perhaps in other teams. And also, um, I think it's probably a good time to um, really look at this a bit more um, across the whole company um, as well. Another point, um, I did some research, I did a lot of reading um, about this as to why it's such um, a really important thing, which is that most employees, they want careers, not jobs. Um, they want to feel like they have a purpose um, and they know that 
that once they're in a role, they can grow um, and develop their skills. There's, there's a couple of really good um, articles there um, that you can take a look at um, as well to kind of support that. And also, um, it really does strengthen um, engagement. And managers play a really crucial part um, in developing careers um, in a company because obviously usually um, at the one-on-ones um, managers are usually the first point of call for people if they want to discuss their career goals their growth um, and things like that so this is obviously is a really good um, topic for us to look at so how can we do this um, at GitLab well um, as Sarah and I discussed, it all starts with a conversation um, at the one-on-ones and um, from those conversations you can begin to map out and discuss um, what the person in your team wants to do and then from that you can create um, a career development plan which I'll talk about a little bit later and as Sarah said, we, also, we already have junior, senior and staff levels defined um, for most positions at GitLab um, and there is also a question in the performance reviews on um, talking about knowledge, um, skills and abilities and how you want to develop those. And also um, we can link development goals to the OKRs as well. So we can start um, to do this. Um, and at this point, Sarah and I were talking about how we can kind of... Um, demonstrate um, the conversation. So we are going to do a little uh, role play and I'm going to stop showing my screen so you can see us both. So we have two scenarios um, that we want to go through. One is a one-on-one -on -one where the individual is um, Sarah, help me out. I can't remember how we describe this now. The overconfident achiever. The overconfident achiever, that's right. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have the um, wallflower. So the person who's probably not very forthcoming, a bit of an introvert. Um, so Sarah will play the role of the UX lead, funnily enough. Um, and I will be one of her um, direct reports. And we're just going to go through um, the conversation of how we talk about um, planning uh, career development. All right. So uh, the scene is, it's our one-on-one. -on -one. We've already kind of talked about uh, ongoing issues, anything that Abby wanted to discuss uh, in, her, in her role or day-to-day -day work. Um, and at this point, uh, I want to broach the, the subject of uh, career development and, and how she really wants to, uh, or how she sees herself uh, moving forward here at GitLab. So it begins. <laughs> uh, so Abby, I've never asked you about your career plans. No, that's kind of funny. Um, no, we've never really, we never really talked about that. Do we have time to do that? Seems like we're we kind of busy, lots to do. Oh, there's always time. So we don't have to go over it every time we meet, but I think that it's oh, that's good. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think it's important that we talk about ways uh, we can develop and grow your career here at GitLab. I mean, have you really thought about your short term and, and long term career goals? Well, to be honest, I've been here for ooh, three months now, and I really feel that I want to be the UX lead. Um, I have lots and lots of ideas and ways on how we can improve our UX design process and even run the team more efficiently. And I think I'd be great at it, really. And people tell me all the time that I'm a natural born leader and I'm, I'm just ready. I'm ready to do it. Oh, that's, uh, and that's awesome. So I'm really glad to hear that you thought about it. And it's great that you want to be lead someday. I mean, that's a solid long term career goal. Um, so right now your role is UX designer. So the next st step here at GitLab uh, is senior UX designer. And have you looked at the skills and the abilities associated with that role? Uh, yeah, but I, I'm already doing a lot of the things that that role describes. I'm basically already a senior uh, designer. Okay. So it sounds like we need to take a look at the role and see where you fit in. It's possible that you do have many uh, or most of the skills and abilities listed. So, um, and if that's the case, then we can start to make a case to promote you to senior designer. 
Um, if we do spot some skills gaps, we can put together a plan to work towards that role um, and check in on it uh, in our one-on-ones. How does that sound? Mm, sounds okay, but I mean, how long is this going to take? Uh, there's no set time. Um, so it's really about uh, you and I working together to make sure that we both feel comfortable that you have um, sufficiently shown that you, uh, you know, have the skills and, and, and what it takes to, to fill that role. Um, so whatever's lacking, we can definitely work on that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that sounds good. I'm kind of um, surprised a little bit, but I, I guess, I guess these things take time. And they do. If we're going to review it and you're going to help me, um, yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. So I'll stop there on, on that one. Um, I've actually had conversations like this before. I don't know how many of you have. And I'd actually, Abby, I'd like to open it up and kind of get some feedback mm -hmm. from people, um, maybe hear from people that have had conversations like this. I actually toned it down um, <laughs> from some of the conversations I've had with people that were very, very eager and very confident um, that they were ready to move on and move up. Um, and we have some kind of key points and key takeaways after we go through the wallflower one, but I'm just curious, has anyone ever had this kind of conversation or this type of personality that they've had to, to, to work with or manage? Yeah, not quite as extreme as that example, but yes. Um, there's always people whose ambitions uh, don't quite match your perception of their abilities or level. I also had the same situations that uh, especially juniors already thought that they are like senior or should be lead of a team. So yes. people have had like an experience of one and a half year <laughs> uh, of doing their job when they wanted to be lead. So um, I think sometimes it's it's hard to reflect for people their actual technical skills, the actual, in our area of engineering architecture skills, their social skills. And one of the biggest topics that overestimate people a lot in my opinion is, is simply planning skills and, and how to do time management and how to be pragmatic. And one of the biggest values of GitLab also which is the boring solution, which is also a lot of uh, the time a problem with engineers that they like to build a rocket ship for just a tiny menu color change. <laughs> uh, so uh, stuff like that happens a lot and I've seen in the past. Awesome. Thanks, Tim and Ernst. I appreciate it. Um, so let's go into the second one. And then there's some key points uh, that I wanted to, to make about, about these two conversations and how they're the same and how they're different. Um, so the next one is the, the, the wallflower. So same scenario, but completely different personality. Um, so Abby, uh, I've never asked you about your career plans. Uh, have you thought about it? Mm, career plans? I'm mm, kind of happy where I am, to be honest. Okay, I'm glad that you're happy and that's good to hear. Um, we don't know, need to go over this every time, but I'm just curious about, uh, you know, what your, your future plans are, if you thought at all about um, your career and growth here at GitLab, any short or long-term goals? Um, not really. I, I think I just need to find a course maybe to go on. Um, and maybe the company will pay for it. Is that how it works? Um, well, I mean, you possibly you could. It depends on what the goal is. So if there is a goal that you have that means learning a new skill or, or um, beefing up an area of knowledge that you really don't have a lot of experience in, then you could take a course that might be part of it. Um, but I think really you're doing an excellent job right now in your current role as UX designer. Um, you have a lot of experience behind you. I just wondering if you thought at all about the next step to maybe to senior designer. Um, perhaps a, a little bit. Um, I really honestly feel like I have um, so much more to learn and I'm not really sure if I'm 
kind of confident enough to 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 push myself um to go forward um i probably yeah i'm a little bit hesitant apprehensive about that at this point okay um okay well i would say that just from my perspective i've watched you um watch your work obviously <laughs> in the issues and i've seen the way that you've been mentoring uh the junior designers on the team and i think that you have a really good sense of collaboration you're very knowledgeable in ux principles and um i see confidence in your abilities your actual ux abilities and, and working through those problems so maybe some of the confidence is um in kind of seeing yourself as a leader um so I'd really like to take a look at, at the role and see what skills and abilities um, you already map to and kind of the areas that we feel like we need to do work on. Um, and then we could see what's missing, create a plan. Um, and if, hey, if you're not interested in doing that, that's not a prerequisite. You don't have to uh, move to senior designer. There's no pressure. Um, I just wanted you to know that that is an opportunity you have here if that's something you're interested in. Okay. Um... Yeah, that sounds good. I'm a little bit nervous because I think with promotion or if you, you move up um, in your career, you kind of have to manage people and or be very, you know, be present and things like that. And I'm quite nervous about that. So, um, yeah, that would be my only my only thing. I, I am kind of happy at the moment, but OK. If you think I, if you think um, it's something that I can do in the longer term, and we can we can have a plan for that to happen, that that would be good. Yeah, I mean, no pressure. I think not everybody wants to to manage um, people, and and I think sometimes you can see management as as telling people what to do or a place of authority. But I think a lot of times it is a mentorship and a teaching, and it's a it's a give and take. And I see that you have that with the junior designers. So I just wanted you to know that if that's something you wanted to develop and really work on, you can. And um, senior level, there is going to be more. Uh, participation expectation and and there may be uh, times when you need to give a presentation um, but that's something that you can always practice you could always take over part of the functional group update um, maybe uh, jump in and do one section of it or uh, sit in on meetings uh, other meetings and maybe um, present a design um, but again if that's not something you're comfortable with at the moment not a problem we can just uh, keep it in mind for the future maybe okay um so how often would we, if we have a plan, how often would we look at it? Um, I don't want to do it every time, um, unless you feel it's necessary, but uh, at least, you know, uh, maybe once a month. Uh, and if that's, even that's too much and you're really kind of happy where you're at, then we can set it out even longer. It's really up to you and your comfort. Okay, thanks. Awesome. So, thanks, Abby. Whew, role playing. Never fun. <laughs> but the whole point there was that there are going to be some people that are really overconfident. They overestimate their abilities and there's going to be others that underestimate. Probably a lot of people will really fall in the middle and it'll be a lot easier to have these conversations. It won't be as painful as these do. Um, but I would, some key uh, points would be to actively listen. Um, don't be quick to discount their assessment of themselves. Um, look for some common ground and focus on understanding their overall goals so that you can can work towards that. Um, and then control to maintain control of the conversation, ensure that it stays on track. The focus should be on their current skill set and abilities and how to cultivate those for a career path. So if they have un unrealistic expectations or, or assessment of themselves, I think that it's really good to, to start breaking those down and looking at them. Um, and then for me, another one is adaptation. And I think that we all do this to adapt your approach differently to uh, different personality types. People that overestimate their skill sets, I think, need to give, be given more specifics on where they do and don't meet expectations. Um, and they may need their areas of, of, of failing or where they come up short to be pointed out more plainly, uh, always caringly, but a little bit more defined. Um, and those that underestimate their skill sets may need more emphasis on what they're doing right because they tend to focus on the negative. They hear that inner dialogue and it's more difficult for them to take a step back and look at themselves objectively that way. Um, and also not everyone wants to advance. Some people are going to be really happy in the role that they have. They want to stay there. And I think that should be equally supported. 
Um, so those were the key points I just wanted to point out about those two different scenarios and, and how they differed. So, so thank you for indulging us in that, that bit of role play. <laughs> Okay, before we move on, does anybody have any questions? Anything they want to share at this point? Obviously, I have a question like always. So, um, Sarah, thank you very much for this. Uh, the role playing was actually really helpful. Um, but the question is, um, you say that not everyone wants to, to advance and uh, that's, that's totally fair, right? But uh, whose responsibility is to uh, keep checking on that and uh, not come off as, as uh, you know, too forward with that check? Like, how do you, how would you handle that? I, me personally, and, and it's funny because I, I've, I feel like I've had a lot of really uh, uh, different ends of the spectrum. I've, I've dealt with people that I would probably put in more of a narcissistic category. They just seem to be unfailingly optimistic. They think that everything they do is amazing and, and it, it's all about them. And then I've had the complete opposite where it's difficult to even get them to really um, say more than yes or no in a one-on-one -on -one meeting where it's, it's just, it's like pulling teeth and you're trying to find things to talk about. So I think that um, if you have someone like that, that really, um, isn't very interested. I think it depends. It depends on one, are they doing well in their current role and do they seem happy? If so, I don't know that I would bring it up very often. Um, I would kind of let it lie until maybe I, I and uh, this, this isn't very concrete, but personally I would leave it until I really get some cues that maybe they were looking to do more or maybe give it six months and, and, and maybe bring it up again. Um, but if it's someone that I think is just really, um, doing a, a great job and maybe it's, it's a lack of confidence. It's something that they, they, you could see, see that they really want, but they're, they're afraid of. I might be a little bit more pushy. I might bring it up a little bit more often and just say, Hey, I just want you to know that I really believe in you. And I think that this is something that you could do if you want to. Um, but I think there really is a balance of it and it, it can be difficult. Um. I would love to chime in. So something at GitLab the first time I've done this uh, that I think has worked really well on my team, we've just started it. Um, so we have our job description, which outlines the roles and responsibilities and the levels. And effectively what I've done is for everyone, we've created a path to promotion document that just outlines what I expect to see. And then at the end of that meeting, at the end of that one-on-one, -on -one, um, I tell them like, it's, it's in your court. You can go as fast or as slow as you want here, you know, and, and we'll check in on this every, uh, every few one-on-ones and see, see how things are progressing. And that gives me an opportunity to uh, very uh, hands off also check the document to see if things have moved or haven't moved and how long, and then determine if I want to bring that up or not bring that up. Um, and it's been working really well. And also, as I pair and work with the team, when we do something, I say, oh, make sure you put this on your path to promotion doc. So it becomes very clear and actionable. Oh, yeah, this is a great thing that, that makes perfect sense there and kind of just gives the opportunity to um, start working towards it. And everybody's working at their own pace. And, and that works. Uh, that's been working really well. So just wanted to share that more. And that might help as well on your team. That's awesome, Lee. I have a similar document and I, I'm pretty sure that Abby has links to, to different documents and I think someone else uh, had one as well. So that's fantastic. I don't know if this applies to anybody here, but when I first started uh, being the lead at the front end, there was uh, no like junior, mid, senior, and it was just engineer. And the one thing I would say about that is that if you have to define because in the beginning there was nowhere for anybody to move to so they were just and then they started wondering okay where are we moving so i would just say that being much more proactive about that before questions you know start happening just thinking about like if you were them where would you want to move to and if there are enough 
things to move to in the first place. Um, because a lot of times that happens, especially if you're in a startup and everything's new and there's nothing really uh, defined. Cool, okay. Um, I'm gonna go back to the presentation um, just really quickly. So, my next slide is what's next. Um, so here I've just put, we've already talked about this, allocate some time at the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I actually, when I was looking into this um, to try and help when you're at doing the one-on-ones, when you're asking some questions about identifying competencies and skill gaps, there's some questions there. These are in the um, work in progress merge request already, and I will be sure to remove them from the slide deck and put a link there once we merge it. Um, but those are really good um, questions to ask. Of course, if there's others that you find, um, please go ahead and share those um, in the merge request also. Hayden has already asked about templates. Um, so when I was doing my research for this training, I actually, I asked, of course I went straight to Sarah because she volunteered, um, and she's actually created a template for the UX team, which I think is brilliant because it covers, it has the GitLab values in there. Um, please go and take a look at that. This will also be in the handbook. Um, similarly, Amara had a, a, a template that she was using um, as well, which is really great too. Cortland, unfortunately, I don't think he's on the call, but he shared with me, this isn't necessarily a career development plan, but it's like a scorecard, which is in um, an, uh, a Google sheet, um, which there's some Myers-Briggs stuff in, in there, but again, it's, it's something else that somebody's using. Um, and he's found that to be really useful. It's a shame he's not on the call, but because um, he could explain it in a bit more detail. And there's a link there um, to another template um, that's available. But the point I want to make with these is that um, this is having a template would be really great. But of course, it depends on how what the team member responds to um, and what works for you. But I would um, recommend Sarah's one. I think it's just brilliant, um, especially with all, with all the values in there. Um, Sarah, I don't know if you want to jump in and explain that a little bit before I, before I move on. Oh, just to say that the first, um, the first uh, sheet is um, kind of an explanation of what each of the tabs below are. So um, it's just hard to do anything that's, that's really uh, <laughs> amazing with Google Sheets. So when you first go in, that first uh, sheet is kind of an explanation of, of what each section is. And then each tab, as you open it up, it maps, gives you places to map actual issue links. Um, to values at GitLab and then issue links to how you're fulfilling your current role and then the last tab is all about um, looking forward to another role in the company and another thing I want to say um, is that we're talking here about moving up up within your given um, place so in the UX team um, but I do I do have somebody on my team that's really interested in product and understanding what it is to be a product manager and those kinds of things. So that's also something to encourage. It's not just about staying and moving up within one area of the company. It could be anywhere within the company. Yep, and um, I think a good time to discuss um, and create a career development plan. One good opportunity to do that is during, or just after the performance review discussions. Um, you can, you know, obviously plan um, a bit more for the future with the person once you've discussed um, what they can improve on and what they've done really well, and also what they want to do um, in terms of their careers um, at GitLab. And the people operations team, um, we're very much um, behind this. We really want to assist um, with the process of doing the mapping for all the different roles. We know we still have some work to do. Um, and I know Brittany's on this call um, as well, because I know she's very keen to, to get involved um, in this. So I will certainly be checking in, as I, as I always do with each of you, um, to find out about careers and things like that, um, in addition to what we normally talk about. 
So um, I hope that is helpful. And are there any questions? Yeah, I think there's some in the doc, Abby, if you want to take a look at the doc. Okay. Uh, Ernst, levels in UX, you tie to years, but is it about experience? Is the year guideline written anywhere? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I'm okay. jumping to the um, page. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in on you there. Sorry. Um, this refers to the slide where you showed the role levels and that you know, I'm familiar with the, the naming of the levels and, and the fact that we describe the levels and uh, sometimes I've had people ask me, so, you know, what does that mean? If, if five years, am I, am I a senior? And it's like, well, it's not about the years. It's about, are you, are you matching the experience and the abilities and the skills of this level? Um, but people like the abstraction and simplicity of a, of a number sometimes. So I'm just, and you, and you provided one in that slide. So I'm wondering um, if you use that at all, or, you know, is this sort of a, yeah, what's the, what's the, what's the use of the number there? So um, if you click on the link um, from that UX designer, the screenshot, and you go in, there are no year limits like that, the entry level, two to five, six plus. Um, that's not really uh, listed out there. However, when we list jobs, uh, if you go to an actual job listing for UX designer, uh, junior, senior, uh, and, and the... Uh, Aver not average level, that's a terrible way to say it, but junior UX and, and senior. Um, those do have years um, for people that are coming in from outside the company. I, d I don't necessarily treat that as a, it has to be within this range because there are plenty of people that, um, you know, excel and there are others that it takes just a longer amount of time for them really to, to build up the skill sets. And a lot of times it can be that they're amazing designers, but they're lacking in soft skills um, or they're, they're lacking in some other area. So I see that as kind of just a general guideline, but not something to be strictly followed. Right. So I would agree with that. But you're saying that when we post jobs, we do include it as a guideline? Yes. That's interesting. In that case, we might want to sort of clarify. I thought we did. Actually, Stan says no. So well, in the job description, description yes. when you go to the UX designer, for example, we don't actually put it in the senior levels and things like that. Just because no, but when we advertise a job, we do. Um, hold on. I'm just double checking to make sure I maybe I was incorrect. Yeah. So in this one here, I'll just send you a quick link. So it, for instance, for mine, um, it lists uh, a minimum of three plus years experience. So we do in the job descriptions, um, uh, or in the job uh, jobs that we put out, but not here. Um, and this is not something that I would sit and say, well, do you have two to five years experience? I was just kind of putting this down as a basic guideline for levels, but um, can just as easily be taken out. It's not necessary. So it's a really good question, Ernst. Um, I'm going to turn my mic off and let you move. Mark had the next point on start conversation. Yeah. So in, in, what I, I guess just what I've always done is, is how to start that conversation. I know you went through a couple of examples in your role play, but to me, it's about create your own reality. What do you really want to do? And Sarah kind of mentioned this a little bit, but you know, some people are in current functions or jobs or whatever and want to move into a different area. Um, and so how can we help them do that regardless of it's, you know, a more senior position in their current function or, uh, into, like I said, a totally different functional area. So to me, it's about, starting that conversation with, you know, create your own reality. What do you want to do? You, you wave a magic wand, where do you end up? And so that's, I think that's kind of uh, uh, all I was saying there. I love it. That's awesome. Okay. And then the next one was mine again. So there was a point in a slide, I think it was the, 
seventh slide, uh, linking OKRs to career development goals. So I recall doing that very specifically the first quarter that we were using OKRs and I was the interim support lead um, because OKRs at the time went down to the individual level and it was easy to have a goal at the team level of providing better support for customers and then trickle that down to individuals. If you as an individual are better, um, have these additional skills, then the team will be better. So we made that connection. Now we have OKRs that I think are, are better, clearer, in terms of not going all the way down to the individual level. It's going to be much easier to track OKRs uh, and work towards them as a team. But it makes it more difficult to link OKRs to career development. So I was wondering um, if the way you do this now is by essentially in one-on-ones set individual goals that tie it to both career development and OKRs. That's how I would imagine doing it. I'm just wondering if that's, in fact, the way you do it. That's the way I do it. My template um, that, that Abby shared still actually has, I think the second, uh, the second tab in is, has the OKRs. Um, and they're, while they're not individual goals, since it's a team goal, everybody um, is pitching in and helping. So it gives them an opportunity to say, hey, I worked on this issue, which, which maps to this, this OKR. Um, so I don't know if that's uh, right or wrong, but it, it felt like something that made sense in terms of making sure everybody on the team felt that they were contributing um, and working towards a goal together. Uh, and that also does show how they're, um, how they're working towards whatever goals they may have, whether it's to you know, just be an awesome UX designer or whether it's to move into other areas, et cetera. Yeah, and I, if I can just add, because I, I added the point, um, for us in the PeopleOps team as well, there's certain things that we can you know, for our OKRs, there's certain projects and things that we can work on and they're great development opportunities because there's things that, you know, some of us haven't done before and we're kind of jumping in and just, you know, um, developing ourselves that way. So that was my kind of mindset um, with linking them um, to OKRs as well. It's just another, another way um, of people sort of stretching their skill sets a little bit. Stan, I think you had the next point. Yeah, I think I noticed on the role play, we mentioned that with the over eager person um, going from junior to lead, there is an implicit, and I've done this before, there's an easy way to assume that just, you know, moving them up to a kind of management position is a natural progression, but in many cases it's not. And I'm wondering how do we juggle that other than just focus on the, um, the next step for them. <clears throat> Um, I, I, I think if someone wants to be lead and they're in a, in, in that, uh, maybe they're a junior or they're, I definitely want to, to map how, where their skills are. So if, if we're mapping their skills and, and they just, they're at junior, but they just blow away that UX, like they've got everything, then it's like, okay, well, man, you're already doing that. Well, let's look at the next step. So what is senior doing that, that. That, that you are already fulfilling and maybe they blow that one away. Um, I think that it, it, it does make sense to, to at least look at it in that fashion in terms of, of evaluating their skill set. Um, to me, anyway, it, it, that makes sense. Yeah, so I'm just reading your comment about where um, management versus technical track start that's something I didn't mention um, which was the fact that I think certainly in my background people who uh, move up in technical roles um, they kind of get people added um, to them when they become um, more senior and I think um, not everyone wants to be a manager they just want to be a really strong um, technical specialist or whatever so I think that's a really interesting point that we should be conscious of that and then perhaps have a career track separated out for people who want to go um, into management or people who want to stay um, on the technical side. I've got the next one there if we're ready to move on about uh, just managing expectations. Um, 
in the absence of, a, of an open position that a, a candidate could move into. Um, you know, I've got my own ideas on it. Of course, we could, you know, give them a, a title change, could be, you know, uh, go from a sales development rep to a senior sales development rep, um, pay increase. Um, but any ideas on, on what others do? Uh, this, is, this one typically comes up. A lot of folks, you know, want to get into uh, enterprise software sales and they start out as a sales development rep. And, you know, that's a, that's a tough role. You know, they're going to be in that role doing outbound prospecting for a year to 18 months and there's a high burnout factor. So we obviously don't want to lose people who have learned our trade and our domain. Um, but by the same token, there's not always an open slot for them to move into sales. And if there is an open slot, maybe we want someone with 10 years of experience. And of course, they don't really have any. So that's just one example of where um, someone in a junior role is really keen to move up, uh, but there just may not be a slot. So what are, what are some of the things that people have done to uh, you know, manage that expectation? So Hayden, just one thought there. I don't know if it's sort of directly applicable to sales given, you know, sort of the unique nature of, you know, the role and the different types of sales roles. But I think one thing is, you know, to your point of keeping them motivated and engaged is, you know, giving them sort of stretch, uh, stretch goals or stretch projects, projects. Um, that you can get them involved in or have them take the lead on. I think, it's um, sometimes projects that are, you know, outside of their comfort zone or something that, you know, uh, typically they would not be involved in or take the lead on. Um, but, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for them to, you know, sort of push their, their boundaries and also for you to assess, um, you know, their capabilities to uh, take on that additional responsibility. Um, so, you know, as there are new initiatives or, you know, strategic areas that the team needs to focus on and you may not have the capacity within, you know, the other parts of the team to, you know, plug that person into, um, to give them that opportunity to stretch themselves. Yeah, that's a good one, Joe. Thank you. Um, one thing I did think of was, uh, maybe making them a mentor to new hires, uh, give them a little bit of, um, bit of motivation, a bit of a senior kind of a leadership role within their particular group. It's just one thing I thought of. Yeah, that's a good idea, Hayden. I've added that to the doc. Um, I think we're out of time now, but um, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone for jumping on the call. Um, apologies for the start. I'm not sure what happened um but thanks very much for sarah as well for being an absolute star and helping me um put together something um, a little bit different with the role play um and i will reach out to you all again um for the next session thanks very much everyone thank you